In today's video, I'm going to explore a potentially useful technique for making decorative papers and also potentially book cloth. The technique is known as cyanotype. It was a very early photographic process and you may know it better as the process that produces blueprints. The process was discovered by the astronomer Sir John Herschel in 1842 and it involves using a couple of chemicals that when mixed together become sensitive to light, particularly ultraviolet light. You use these chemicals once they're mixed together to sensitize something such as paper and then expose that to ultraviolet light to produce an image. You can buy pre-sensitized paper in kits called sun prints, but that's too simple for me. So I've bought some of the chemicals to mix up which are commercially available as well for uh, using in this process. When you mix the two chemicals up individually, they remain stable. It's only once the two chemicals are mixed that they become photosensitive. So you can mix up, I think I mixed up 100 milliliters of each here, just following the instructions. And then I can keep those and mix them together when I want to sensitize paper or cloth. They're nasty looking and sounding chemicals, so make sure that you wear appropriate personal protective equipment like gloves and goggles. But the process is fairly straightforward. Just follow the instructions, mix up the right weight of the dry chemical with the right amount of water, and then let them sit for 24 hours before using them. So now that you have the chemicals, you mix an equal amount of each together and then paint that on the material that you want sensitized. But of course, once they're mixed, it becomes photosensitive. So I'm going to uh, put a sheet of mylar underneath the materials that I'm going to sensitize. And I'm reenacting this because in a moment I'm going to turn out the lights. Now you can do it under a tungsten bulb, um, but I thought it'd be sort of nostalgic to pretend I'm in a dark room and work under a safe light. So I'm just showing the process in normal light before I go ahead and do it. And then once I've sensitized the paper and cloth, then I'll let them dry in the dark. Since I don't have many dark rooms in the house, that means that I need to get them dry before sunrise. And then once they're dry, I put them between some large pressing boards. So once the red light's on, then I'm just going to mix up equal amounts of each of the chemicals in our large beaker that my large natural bristle brush will fit into. And then on top of the mylar sheets, I will uh, well and truly saturate the cloth and paper that I want sensitized. I mixed up 100 milliliters of each of the chemicals and I'm using 25 milliliters of each, each time I sensitize material. So it's lasted me quite a long time and the two containers of the dry chemicals uh, will make, I think, four batches. So it will, uh, those chemicals will go a long way. Working in the safety light brought back a lot of memories for me. I'm old enough to have done film photography and it was a hobby of mine, so I was able to use a dark room. And when I went to Antarctica, you had to do other jobs other than your normal job. And because I was good at using a dark room, I put up my hand to maintain the station's dark room. And that came with the second job as being the x-ray technician, because you could develop uh, films then you had to be the x-ray technician. So the first x-ray I ever took was a practice one of a frozen penguin. So I've done a sheet of paper and now I'm doing cloth. The cloth does absorb a lot more material. And once these are done, I'll let them dry in the dark and then I will put some blotters around them and put them between press boards and then put them in a black garbage bag. Here I'm demonstrating how I set up to expose the prints. I have a piece of grey board, then the sensitised paper, then the thing that I'm making an image of, then a sheet of glass, and then another piece of grey board. And then I take that outside, put it in the sun, and then take off the top grey board. 
The first demonstration I'll do is of some fish parchment that I made myself. So I put down the sensitized paper, arrange the parchment on the paper the way I like it, then I'll put the glass down and then the other piece of grey board. And then I'll take that outside, uh, make sure it's the sun's in the right position. Like there's going to be, it's not going to be directly overhead. So I prop up the tray a little bit, uh, then take the grey board off and then time the exposure. In Brisbane, Australia, even though it's early spring, the sun's already quite high in the sky. It's just before the equinox or sunrise at the South Pole. So I expose this for 20 minutes. So I leave it there for 20 minutes, then I put the cover back on, then take it into the shade, and then put the print into water and give it a good rinse, and then change the water a half a dozen times, and then leave the print in water for five minutes to uh, fix, I guess. Once the prints are dry, the chemicals in the material continue to oxidize for up to 24 hours when they reach their final deep Prussian blue color. So the uh, color that you see now after rinsing isn't the final color. I found especially on the cloth that the colors become significantly deeper over the next 24 hours. This oxidization process can be enhanced or sped up with the addition of chemicals such as hydrogen peroxide or citric acid or acetic acid. Though I've never actually used them. I've found that after 24 hours, as long as I've had a long enough exposure to sunlight, that the colors have worked out really well, or it's a color that I really like anyway. So I've let it soak in there in the tray for five minutes. So all the chemi excess chemicals have been removed. So now it's just a matter of letting it dry. And then once it's dry, I press it between large press boards and blotters to flatten it out. I've been doing prints with my kids. And the fun part is trying to come up with things to print. And then someone had the idea of trying to find an old x-ray. So I had a problem with my hand a few years ago. Well, another problem with my hand a few years ago and I thought I'd give it a go, see if I could get a print of my hand x-ray. So I've sensitized some white cotton cloth. I did try sensitizing yellow cotton cloth to see what the colors would come out like, and it worked really well. And there'll be an example of that at the end of the video. But for now, I'm gonna do the x-ray on normal white cloth. It's fun to experiment with all these different things, but at some point I am a bookbinder and I have to use them somehow. So then you have to start thinking about grain directions, the size of the sheets, the sizes of the pieces of the cloth, what's around the edges, etc. And I'm still working on those details. Of course, it was a bit cloudy this day, but even in bright sunshine, I found that the X-ray film is actually a very good UV absorber. So you have to really overexpose or uh, give a longer exposure for the x-rays. Well, this particular x-ray anyway. So I think I did 35 minutes this day. Have I mentioned that I've opened a Patreon account? I was giving my patrons a sneak peek of this process this week and John came up with this fantastic idea of making a Halloween book using one of these prints of an x-ray. If supporting me as a patron is something that you're able to and would like to do, it would be greatly appreciated. And if you follow the link in the description below, you'll be able to see the sort of little extras that I've been posting there. Another one of my wonderful patrons, Kathleen, asked whether you could use photos to transfer images onto cloth and I happened to be in the middle of doing some prints at the time. So I found a couple of really old family photos on done with box brownies, the original negatives, and I printed an image of my grandfather's tractor and dog uh, onto some cloth. It wasn't perfect but it, it showed that it's possible. I'll finish today by just showing you some of the images that I've come up with so far. 
I'll be using some of these in projects in the future, hopefully a Halloween book for instance. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, I really appreciate you hitting the big thumbs up button. If you want to be notified of my future videos, please hit the subscribe button. And until next time, cheerio.